answers. I anticipated some of the answers, pretty well figured out some. But some of them were, uh, and I wasn't shocked at it, it's just that uh, some of the responses, not answers, but some of the responses, my love for people more. You know, it just goes on and on. And so you could just take that one word, but it's what you get out of it is what's going to be important. And then what you do, you carry that, you make sure you carry that out. You make this commitment to carry that out through this whole year. Well, the Lord been dealing with me about this message ever since I saw this. Uh, uh, actually, I heard a preacher talking about this. And it just, I mean, it just, it just gripped me. And we're going to talk about this this morning. And you see, I have an example up here. I have a piece of laminate. Okay, first of all, let's look at the word laminate to see what the word laminate. And I had asked you to look up the definition of laminate, if you would. What does what does, what does laminate mean? Okay, so and it comes from. Does it, do we have it up there? Nobody, nobody put it. Okay, we didn't put it. Okay, a laminate is to unite by an adhesive or some other means. Okay, this is what we call laminate flooring. And again, you have to take the natural things if you're going to relate a spiritual message. Jesus always took the natural to relate a spiritual message unto us. Because see, God doesn't need this. But we do. We're humans. So this is the way God relates to us. Again, He uses the sower and the seed. He uses fruit. He uses all kind of natural things to relate a spiritual message unto us. Now, He didn't use laminate floor nowhere in the Word of God because, again, this is a new thing here that, that has been made in our time. So I'm going to take something you know, of our times and, and I'm going to relate a spiritual uh, message out of that through the Word of God. If you know anything about laminate, this is a bunch of di different pieces of whatever. Laminate could be, a, 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 you know, it doesn't matter what it's made of. But this is a bunch of different pieces of whatever substance it is. And it's held together by an adhesive. That's what it is. Plywood would be the same thing. It's pieces of wood held together. Particle board, board you see the particle board over there. It's, it's a wood and it's a very strong wood. And it's held together with a glue or with an adhesive. And that's what laminate is. And actually, if you would understand, and you know anything about laminate, it's harder than natural wood. It's even more sturdy, and it's harder. If something falls on this, it will, it will not hardly dent it. If you drop something on a natural floor, a natural wood floor, a lot of times it will make a dent in it, but laminate is made harder because of the glue adhesive that holds it together. Okay, first of all, I want to look at I want to look at a few scriptures. Psalms 139 and 14. I will praise thee, O I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. I will praise thee, for I am this human body is fearfully and wonderfully made. What holds this body together? We don't think a whole lot about it, do we? What holds all this skin together? What holds my heart together? What holds every part of my body? What holds it together? It's a substance called laminin. Laminin. Okay. And here's what I... It's amazing. Laminin is in the form... If you could... You look at it, and scientists have looked at it. It's in the form of a cross. It's in the form... I want you to take... I want everybody to see this. 
<laughs> Young man's going to show, show it to everybody. I want you to look at it. I want you to see this is, this is the structure. What is laminin? It's a molecule that acts as an adhesive holding all the cells of the body together. How many cells do we have in the body? The number of cells in the human body is 37 trillion. It's hard to even think that far, huh? How many zeros? How many zeros are in 37 trillion? Okay. 37 trillion. Well, to put it this way, if you put each cell together, it's enough cells to wrap around the world four and a half times. That's how many cells. And without laminin, those cells would just be going every which way. They would not, the, the human body could not be formed. But when God took out of the dust of the ground and He formed the human body, it seemed like a simple process just taking the dust out of the ground. He just used the dust. He could have used anything, but He used the dust out of the ground and He formed something that is spiritually and wonderfully made. So very complicated that it needed something to hold all themselves together. And it, they are held together in the form of of what looks like a cross. Some of you are already getting this. Held together in the form of what looks like a cross. Now believe me, I didn't need this message to build up your faith in God. You should already have faith in God. But to me, since the Word of God tells me that the human body is fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, it just, it, it's amazing that scientists have acknowledged the fact that, that the, the, the molecules, they're like a glue substance, they're like an adhesive that holds every one of those cells together. And every one of them are held together with this substance, like glue-like substance called laminin. Let's look at Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Now what we're doing, we're using the natural body to try to relate a spiritual message unto you about the spiritual body. Because I'm going to tell you, God's the one made us. And we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and he, he is what holds us together. Some of you, and the reason I'm preaching this this morning, some of you may feel like your life is falling apart. I talked about it this morning. Some of you, your minds feel like it's just going every which way and you, you can't captivate and you can't bring it together. See, the devil wants to destroy your mind. He can destroy your mind. He can destroy your body. And then he can destroy your soul. That's what he's, you see, that, that's what he's seeking to do is to destroy your soul. But often he will use the body and the things of the body to work on your soul, to find an avenue to get to your soul. But let me tell you, we have a natural body and we have a spiritual body. And when your heart belongs to God, and you give your heart to God, you are held together by what? The love of God. Let's read some scriptures. Colossians 2.19 And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands. This is, this is talking about the spiritual body here. But again, we understand that the natural body is composed of joints and bands. But all these joints and bands, my elbow can move. 
Why can it move? Because it's held together with a molecule substance called laminin. And it's able to move. Or if not, my arm would just fall off. You know, my legs would just fall off. Every, you know, there's no way this body could be kept together. And I, and, and I want you to get this message this morning. God's going to keep you together. God's going to keep you together. Even though it might seem like your world is falling apart. And it may like seem like everything around you is falling apart. If you have your faith in God and faith in that old rugged cross, you're going to stay together and you're going to make it. And not holding the head from which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment and ministered and knit together, knit together, are held together, increased with. We know what we've seen knitting before, right? Stitch after stitch, and you knit something together. And and some of you have sweaters on that's knitted together. You try to pull that. You try to pull that apart. Now, if you could take one string, you could probably break it. But you knit it together, and it becomes as one. That's what that's what knitting together means. Knitting together means you become, it becomes as one. Because it has one purpose. It has one goal. And the Bible says that we as a church are knit together. We as a body of believers are knit together. What is, what are we knit together with? We're knit together with love. By this shall they know my disciples by their Oh, Brother Rabbi, I don't want to hear about love anymore. Well, you don't want to hear about God then. If you don't want to hear about love, then, then you're in the wrong place because the Bible says, and we'll read that scripture, God is love. Everybody say, God is love. So, so all these joints and bands have a nourishment and ministering and knit together. And you see, because of that substance called laminin, that, that glue-like substance that holds everything together, it allows nourishment and blood to flow throughout the body. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that laminin, then the blood would just pour out. It would just go. But it's held together. Your, all your blood vessels, all your, your arteries and all this is held together by that substance called laminin. And again, if you looked at it, we can't see it with the natural eye naturally. But scientists have narrowed it down to the fact that it can and it does come in the form and the shape of a cross. You can pull it up on the internet and it, it's not that precise as far as just like this. But it has the shape of a cross pull it up and look at it it's very interesting okay let's go let's go down to Colossians 2 1 and 2 for I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for all for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. <clears throat> being knit together in love. It's the glue that holds us together. You might say, Brother, I don't, I don't know about that. Well, here's what the Word of God, for God so loved the world Amen. that He gave His only begotten Son. It was because of love that there is a cross. And I'm going to tell you, it wasn't the nails that held Him on the cross. It was love that held Him on the cross. And it's that cross and the, everything that that cross represents the love of God through that cross that's going to hold you together in a world that is falling apart. In an economy that may go down and, and crash. It's going to be God that's going to hold you together. In a world that your mind, Satan has come with tormenting thoughts. Surely dealt with them if you're old enough. And I'm going to tell you what, even children are not exempt. Even youth are not exempt from tormenting thoughts coming against you. And though the outward man perish, that inward man 
Yeah. That, that's where it abides, with inside of us. So everything may be going wrong, wrong in your life. Everything may, you know, it, it may be in turmoil in your life. And again, it may seem like your world is just falling apart. This is happening and that's happening. And you say, if it's not one thing, it's another. But none of those things can affect what's inside of your heart. The love of God still abides. It still abides. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power. It is the laminin. It is that glue, strong substance that holds us together. That keeps us from falling apart. And when we give our hearts to God, it becomes the power. The preaching of the cross becomes the power of God to us. What is the preaching of the cross? The preaching of the cross is for God so loved the world that He gave for God so loved. Again, love is that glue that holds us together, that binds us together. Not only just, you know, we're, we're knit together. And I'm going to tell you what, it's a strong Love is a strong substance. If you can look at it like that. Love is a strong substance. There's nothing more greater than the love of God. The natural love that we talk about can come and go. But the love of God, if you really and truly, you get the love of God inside of you, it's going to keep you through the storms of life. It's going to keep you when everything around you is raging. The love of God is going to sustain you. And the love of God is going to hold you together. When it feels like you're losing your mind, any of you have ever felt you go through things in life, any of you have ever been to the place, maybe I'm only talking to a few this morning, but I doubt that. Have you ever been in a place where it felt like you were losing your mind? Because the enemy comes in like a flood. And, but I'm going to tell you what, he can come in like a flood. But you got a glue-like substance called the love of God that's more powerful than the flood. Do you understand what this human body can sustain? Do you understand what this skin, you know, pull on it, pull on it. You know, you cut it and it grows back. I mean, you realize that just, just looking at the skin, not count, not count other organs of the body, but can you imagine? And it's kind of elastic. You know, it's, it's not tight. It's God knew all that. We we're fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows exactly how to make us. And I'm going to tell you what. There's a natural body. And there's a spiritual body. And our spiritual body is even much stronger than our natural body. Can you tell me why? Because this natural body is going to eventually grow old. And cells are going to die in this natural body. And one day they're going to place us all in a casket. And we're all going to die. But the, 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 the inward man, this natural body is going to go back to the dust of the earth. But this, 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 this new body, the, the inward man, the soul of man, is going to live for eternity, you see. And it's held together by the love of God. 1 John 4, this is what I was talking about earlier. 1 John 4, 16, and we have known and believe. Everybody said, we have known. I know. I know. Nobody can tell me any different. I know. Devil, you can come and try to give me another story. You can come and try to tell me something else. But I already know and I have already believed the love that God hath to us is strong. God's not going to forsake you. 
He's not going to. I don't care what you're going through this morning. Some of you may be going through some dark places. Some of you may be in the storm. And all you can see is darkness, darkness, darkness. And you may not be able to see a light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm going to tell you what this love is going to do to you. This love is going to carry you through. He leadeth me through. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how can I go through this trial? Why can I go through this trial? It's because of the love of God that is inside of me. I can't make it by myself. But with that love, I can make it. And we know we and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. So if you're tired of me preaching on love, you have to find you another church. Because he is love. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'll preach about the wrath of God because I preach the whole counsel of God. But I'm telling you, God is love. It's not the God's desire that anybody goes to hell. God is showing his love to everybody. If you go to hell, it'll be on your own. It'll be your own fault if you go to hell because God has already made a way. If you want to be hell together all the way till you endure to the end till you get to heaven, you can do it with God's love. It's a substance that will hold you together. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Now what we're talking about there is a godly love. Naturally, we're not talking about we're not talking about an erotic love, or we're not talking about even a fetal love, which is a friendly love, and an erotic love. Eros is another type of love, like a love between a man and a woman. That's not the kind of love that we're talking about. We're talking about a deep down love of God. This is how they tell. Okay. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in that day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. That's a powerful statement. Herein is our love made perfect. That kind of love that we're talking about. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. You see, when you really get the love of God inside of you, you're going to have boldness in the day of judgment. When you stand before God on that judgment day, when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess, you're not going to be afraid. Brother Andrew wrote that song, No, I'll not be afraid when I stand before God on that great day. No, I'll not be afraid. Why? Because I'm held together in love. Hallelujah. When Satan tries to dissect me, when he tries to pull me apart, when he try, he's trying to pull any of you. I mean, he just tries to pull us apart. This, I want you to look at, look at this scripture, Romans eight. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present. No, everybody said, no, are things to come. Things to come. It doesn't matter what it is. I am persuaded. Is that all I have? That I have? Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. Why? Because this is held together with a natural glue naturally natural is not as powerful as spiritual but again we have a natural body we have a spiritual body so i use this in relation to the natural body but i also use it in relation to the spiritual body this is held together every little fiber here is held together with a adhesive with a glue and it you know naturally because it's man-made it probably can be broken, separated, but it's intended. It's intended for a purpose to put on a floor. You put one board to the other board and it's a substance that you're meant to walk upon and not do any damage to it, you see? Well, I, and, and 
And spiritually speaking, again, how many know the spiritual is stronger than the natural? Because again, we were, we, we were sown in a natural body, but we're going to be raised a spiritual body. So there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Okay, but how many understands this natural body, though powerful as it may be, though as strong as it may be? How many of you, you're young, you don't know what it is hardly to get bruises and those bruises last. They hardly last. They go right away. But when you get older, your skin gets a lot, you know, it, it, become, it becomes thinner. And, and you know, it, it's, it just, and that's why and you start getting wrinkles. You start getting old. And you start wrinkling up. How many know spiritually we're not wrinkling up? Spiritually I'm not getting old. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is what? Renewed. In other words, I'm not going to ever get any wrinkles. This outward man's going to get wrinkles. It's going to get old. And it's going to slowly decay until finally it, do it dies. And all the cells in the body that was held together with that glue-like substance is going to decay. But that inward man, because of the cross, and because of what Jesus did at Calvary, I am going to live forever and ever. Though the skin worm destroy my flesh, Job said, though the skin worm destroy my flesh, it was built strong, and the body was built a very powerful thing, but yet it is going to decay. But that inward man, Though the skin worms destroy my flesh, yet in my flesh, He's going to give me a new body. <laughs> Let me tell you something about that new body He gives you. It's not ever going to grow old. It's not ever going to decay. It's not ever going to get a wrinkle. You are going to live for 10 trillion years uh, and then life has just begun. I can't fathom that, Brother Ralph. I, I can't grasp that. So though the outward man perish, even though it is constructed in such a strong fashion, you know, I often think, how in the world can my skin withstand so much? How can my heart withstand so much? You know, you realize how many times your heart is pumping? I don't know. I don't know the statistics on this, but your heart pumps so many times a minute. Anybody know? Your heart can pump so many times a minute. And you realize how much blood is flowing throughout your body, constantly flowing throughout your body. Your body can withstand a whole lot because it was fearfully and wonderfully made, but it was not made to live forever. So you see, even though we use that as a symbol at cross, that represents how powerfully constructed the body is and held together, it is still going to decay. But once you come to that old word it crawls, uh, and you get that precious blood of Jesus Christ flowing through your veins, and you let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you, uh, it's going to live forever and ever throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. You're not going to die. No height, no depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from what? My religion? <clears throat> you know, sometimes in religion, how many of you have changed somewhat in your religion? Religious ideas. Now, the Word of God hasn't changed. Bless God, He's the same. I'm the same as I was. But I thank God I'm not the same. I thank God I can be molded and made into His image. I thank God I'm not so hard-headed that I got my mind the way that, bless God, I was raised just religion, and that's what I'm going to be. My mama believed it this way. Bless God, and that's the way I'm going to believe it. 
Hell can freeze over, but I'm going to hold on to that belief. I'll tell you what I'll hold on to. Let every man be alive. Mama, Grandpa, all the rest of them. Brother Ralph, we can all be liars and teach it the wrong way. But this book is not a liar. It forever remains true. Bless God, I was raised Pentecost, I'll die Pentecost. Bless God, I was raised Baptist, and I'll die Baptist. You know what I say? Bless God, I became a Christian, and I want to stay a Christian. I'm not worried about religion. I'm not worried about putting a tag on me. I'm not worried about putting a title on me. I'm not worried about putting a name on me. I just want to be Christ-like. You know what? It doesn't matter if you're Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic. It doesn't matter what religion you are. You've got to go through the cross. And if you don't go to the cross, then the Bible says the love of God, it goes on to say, the love of God is not in you if you don't go by the way of the cross. How can you get love? How can you get the love? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth you know what? When you really believe something, you're going to receive it. If you really believe it, you're going to receive it if it's the truth. So we believe that the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts. Hallelujah. Nothing's going to separate me. Acts 20. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem. What does it mean? He's not actually, at first I thought when I read that, he, he's going and they had him in bonds. No. You read that chapter, Paul's not in bonds. He's not, they don't have him in bond. They're not, they're not carrying him in bond. No, he's a free man at this point in time. He was in bonds at one time, and it, but it's not here. But he says, Behold, I go bound. In what? The Spirit. The Spirit of God is a very strong bond. How does the Spirit of God operate? It operates through the love of God. You see what? After the cross came to what? The resurrection. Then after the resurrection, what did Jesus say? He would send us the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God that would do what? It would live and abide within us. So here Paul is going bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem. But I tell you what, it's a strong mind. It's a strong power. He's not going in his own accord. He's going in the Spirit because the Spirit is leading him there. And he says, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, I don't know what I'm going to face when I get there. But I'm going to tell you what, if you're bound by the Spirit of God and that bond, that's your bond of love that you have and you love God and you allow the Spirit of God to come inside of you. I don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. I'd like to say to all of us, boy, you're going to face sunshine. But how many has awakened to face a storm? Yes. Any of you face the storm in your life? Any of you face the black, dark clouds with the raging sea? The waves beating against your ship trying to sink you? Any of you ever been there? Paul said, I don't know what I'm going to face. But he, uh, he made that statement. I am persuaded nothing going to separate me from God because I got that glue. And when I go bound to Jerusalem, I'm bound in the Spirit of God. There's something that's holding me together. It's something more powerful than what the world is going to come against me with. Because when the enemy comes against me like a flood, the substance that I have called the love of God within me will rise up and withstand the force. Let me tell you what. Again, this natural body Again, it's human, and we use this as an illustration. But how many know you have a natural body, you have a spiritual body? The natural body can be destroyed. Somebody can take a gun, boom, and blow you to pieces. And I mean the laminin 
And all the cells will just go, whatever, wherever they shoot you at, it's just going to go scattering everywhere, Brother Charlie. Oh, I tell you what, I could preach to Jesus come. But how many know the Bible says that if you put on the whole home of God, the fiery darts of the wicked, when they come against you, they won't have that effect. When the fiery darts of the wicked comes against you, what are they going to hit? They're going to hit that shield of faith. What is my faith in? My faith is in the cross. My faith is in what Jesus did at Calvary. And I know there are some churches today, that, you know, they believe, well, we the only ones preach the cross. Well, they've never been to Bayou Saw. They've never been to this little church in Bayou Saw. Because I'm going to tell you what, we preach the cross. Maybe they need to travel around a little bit uh, to some of these little country churches that still believe uh, in the cross and the shed blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So when the enemy comes blasting, it will hit the shield. But we have what? Shield of faith. And when it comes blasting, it's not going to be able to destroy you it will only, it may affect your body. But you see, how many of you have ever been affected with some kind of sickness, some kind of heartache, some kind of deep, deep heartache, some kind of pain? How many of you have ever been affected by something like that? It only, and it will even touch your mind because the enemy comes in again through the mind. But the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. Against it. That's that glue. So Paul said, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem. And I don't know what's going to be there when I get there. But here's what he says. I don't know what shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But, None of those things. Somebody said none of those things. <laughs> move me. None of those things move me. They come against me. Why? Because I'm held together with the substance called, well, if we can, let's just lay, put it like that, with something called the old rugged cross uh, and the blood that Jesus shed at Calvary. Uh, and this is what holds me together. I may come against bonds and I may be put in bond and I may be cast into prison, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself <coughs> so that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. <coughs> none of these things move me. Hallelujah. Again, this substance is strong. A many a foot will walk on this and really not affect it because it's made of a natural substance and a glue that is so powerful. But again, it's man-made. So eventually, 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 it wear down. It will wear down. But let me tell you, we got a spiritual body. And that spiritual body, again, just like this natural body is going to wear down. How many of you feel like you're wearing down? Y'all feel you're getting old? You can't run like you used to. I mean, you can't walk straight like you're going to stumble a little bit and get out of bed and it takes you a little while to get your balance. And yeah, some of y'all are not there yet. You look in the mirror, all you see is a bunch of wrinkles. Some of you are not there yet, but it's coming. It's coming. Some of you are getting a few of them. And I tell you, the older you get, the more you're going to get. Amen. Everything just starts going down. That's the way it works. That's the natural body. But you see, my spiritual body is not like that. Because it's got one place it's going. Somebody get this? It's got one place, Brother Charlie. This natural body is going down, but the spiritual body is going to be raised. It is still the natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. There's one, one way. So I may be my, I, I may be down and discouraged. Some of you may be discouraged this morning. But when men are cast down, there is a lifting up. When all hells come against you 
And you feel like your life is falling apart. And you feel like your mind, you're losing your mind. You're not going to lose your mind because you got a, you got something that's holding you together called the old rugged cross and the blood of Jesus Christ and the love of God. You got something that's holding you together. And he said, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Your mom might forsake you, your dad might forsake you, but he said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. So there may be some of you this morning, you feel like your life has fallen apart. You ever felt you're losing your mind? I just can't bring my thoughts together. I just can't keep it together. I feel like I'm losing it. If you haven't been there, you'll probably be there sometime in your life. You'll probably reach that place. Circumstances and situations will arise that may make you call, make you feel. There's sometimes I go through things and I feel things. I don't know why I'm feeling. It's just horrible feelings of, you know, just. Any of y'all ever feel just? I don't know where I don't know where they where, where they're coming from. I don't know. I know where they're coming from. The devil, but still, sometimes it, it just feels like you know they're coming from every direction. It's kind of like I'm like Job. Sometimes I look for him, I can't find him, but I know my Redeemer liveth. I know He's there. He promised me He'd never leave me, nor forsake me. So there may be someone with every head bowed. There may be someone here today. You say, Brother Ralph, lately I've just been feeling like I've been feeling like my life has been falling apart. Who can separate me from the love of God? That's what the devil's wanting to do. He's wanting to separate you from that love. Because I'm going to tell you, as long as you got that love, you got that binding ingredient that's going to hold you together all the way to the end. All the way to the end. Is there anyone here today that says, Brother Ralph, I need you to I need y'all to pray for me. Just lift your hands. There's hands going up all over the building. I need you to pray for me. And I'm telling you, as I look out, you're not looking, but I'm looking. And you might say, Brother Ralph, this message is not going to touch children. I'm watching children raising their hands. I'm watching maybe seven to eight, nine year old children raising their hand because somehow they were affected by this message. Let me tell you, this book is good enough. It has a way. God's love has a way of reaching children. I want us to pray today, church, for those you didn't look around and see, but God knows. God knows. None of these things will move me. I shall not be moved. I'm planted in God's love. And I am not going to let the devil separate me. I don't care what comes my way. I don't know what's going to befall me tomorrow. But where the Spirit of God leads me, He's going to keep me. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your words that You have spoken today. We thank You, Lord, for Your anointing. We ask, O oh God, that the words that this congregation heard today, that each individual will take that which is intended for them, and they will apply it to their life. And the thoughts of Your Word that was given out to us today, they have an expected end. And in result. And I pray God that these thoughts would become more than just thoughts that enter into our mind. But God it would go down into our hearts. And accomplish that goal that you so desire. Because it must enter into our hearts to accomplish that goal that you so desire. It to have in our life. In Jesus name. I wonder if all of us can say.